Beekeeping is seen as a rather lax hobby, with the harm only attributed to the beekeeper. Beekeeping can also be quite the lucrative business, with raw honey selling for about $22 a quart. But such a safe and profitable pastime can possibly harm the public. That was about to be proven wrong. Because in 2013, in Bellbuckle, Tennessee, a man the local news only referred to as Jackson caused a town-wide catastrophe that lasted for three weeks. This is the story of the accidental apiary avalanche. In 2013, a Tennessee man named Jackson decided he wanted to try a new hobby, beekeeping. He, quote, wanted to make some extra money, so he bought 30 apiaries, a beekeeping suit, and a bee smoker from a man in Kentucky. He then drove all 30 of the bee-filled apiaries home in the back of a U-Haul. However, Jackson wasn't well known in beekeeping, nor did he have the appropriate permits to be keeping bees. In Tennessee, under the Apiary Act of 1995, bees and apiaries must be registered. Upon registration, the beekeeper is given a unique registration number, something Jackson didn't have. Jackson had no idea what he was doing. He just had the equipment to do it. He began setting up his amateur honey-making scheme on top of a massive hill in his backyard. This was not an ordinary hill. This was the type of hill where if you sled down it, you will break something. The front of the hill was steep, 45 degrees and 20 feet tall, and was directly behind Jackson's house. The hill backed up into the woods and was easily accessible by going around the slope. On top of the hill, the apiaries were stacked upon one another and placed seemingly at random. To keep the bees from falling off the hill, Jackson installed a chicken wire fence near the edge of the hill. With everything in place, Jackson continued his new business for the next four months. July 29th. A tornado warning was issued. Power outages, torrential downpour, and wind speeds up to 70 miles per hour. And what would Jackson do to keep his precious bees safe? Well, he pushed them all together and then nailed a tarp over them. Genius. That night, while the wind howled and Jackson tried to get some shut-eye, catastrophe struck. Turns out a tarp with four nails doesn't do so well in high winds. The tarp flew away, and the beehives were completely exposed. The wind began pushing them, rolling them closer and closer to the edge of the hill. It was all up to our trusty hero, Chicken Wire Fence, to save the day. However, the combined weight of 30 beehives and the force of the wind was too much for the fence to handle, and it buckled. All 30 apiaries tumbled down the steep slope, cracking upon hitting the ground. And then, the bees spilled forth. Now, the specific number of bees Jackson had is unknown, but apiaries tend to have 10,000 to 60,000 bees. By using the average 35,000, and multiplying by how many apiaries he had, 30, we can get an estimated bee count of 1,050,000. Now, this high of a number is a bit skeptical and highly unlikely, and was most definitely much less. But all in all, it was a lot of bees. The morning came, but things weren't as quiet as they usually were. There was a buzzing in the air. The town woke to bees. Bees everywhere. Thousands of bees flying through streets, clinging to buildings, covering the roads, and pollinating everywhere. It was a mess. Citizens couldn't exit their homes without unwanted visitors letting themselves in. Were you going to go to work today? Good luck getting in your car, and even better luck not making a thick yellow and red paste while driving. Schools were cancelled, businesses closed, and everyone was trapped in their homes. The police were at a loss. What are you supposed to do in this situation? Bellbuckle is a small town with not many resources. How are they supposed to get rid of all these bees? Option 1. Mass bee slaughter. Too much hassle. The number of bees is just too high. There isn't an effective way to get the job done, and besides, no one wants to shovel dead bees. Option 2. Smoke. What if we drive the bees away with high concentrated blasts of smoke? No good. Filling the town with smoke isn't a good idea, and smoke doesn't drive bees away, it just slows them down. Option 3. Are you ready for this? Vacuum cleaners. That's right, vacuum cleaners. A forced relocation using vacuum cleaners, which is literally taking all of the bees and pushing them somewhere else. And so, an entire town got out their trusty vacuum cleaners and got to work. 
cleaning the streets of the pesky bees. You can imagine this took a while. Three weeks to be exact. Three weeks of the beautiful sounds of buzzing, whirling, and the noise of thousands of bees getting sucked into tubes. Eventually, all the bees were sucked and shot out into various fields. They weren't very good at the whole relocation part, they just willy-nilly put the bees in random fields and forests and whatnot. There was just one last item of business left to be taken care of. Jackson. He was fined, of course. Heftily. Five thousand dollars to be exact. No jail time, although some think he deserved some. And to think. Five thousand dollars, three weeks of bees, and a lot of vacuum cleaners. All because one man wanted some honey.